Hi, I'm Michael King, and welcome to Time Value Money, Part 4, where we're going to talk about perpetuities. We're going to look at constant perpetuities and growing perpetuities, which are in sections 5.4 and 5.5 of Booth, Cleary, and Rapita. So a perpetuity is a type of annuity that goes on forever. It is infinite, which means the number of periods is doesn't end. It is perpetual, thus the name perpetuity. Um, you may wonder what kind of security this could be. Um, well, the dividend on a stock is typically valued uh, viewed as a perpetuity because you don't assume that the company is going to go bankrupt in the future. You assume it's going to have a perpetual life and that the dividend will be paid every period. That may not be the case, but that is how we typically value uh, a company stock. There are two types of perpetuities we're going to look at. The first one is called a constant or a fixed perpetuity. What this means is that that regular payment does not change ever over the perpetual life of this instrument. It's going to be constant or fixed, meaning it's going to be the same amount each period. So for example, here you have a perpetuity of $100 received once every period, I'm going to say years, and as you can see, it doesn't matter whether it's year 1, 2, 3, or 100, it's going to be $100 each period. The second type of perpetuity is a growing perpetuity where there is a regular payment but it grows or shrinks each period by some fixed percentage. So for example a company could have a dividend that grows by 2% each year and you may be wondering how that will affect the value of the company's stock. Here you can see that you may receive $100 at the end of the first year but at the end of the second year, it will have grown by 2% to $102. At the end of the third year, it will be $104.04 because of compounding. And it goes on in perpetuity, growing at 2% each period. So there's a very simple formula that's used to value a constant or a fixed perpetuity. And it is simply to take the payment and divide it by the interest rate. In other words, we're simply going to discount the payments at our discount rate, K. So let's consider an example. Here we have, you, we saw a moment ago, a perpetuity that paid $100 each period forever. If we had a discount rate of 5%, what would it be worth? You can see that you get $100 in perpetuity, and plugging this $100, dividing it by... 0 0.05, which is 5%, the present value in today's dollars is 2000 In other words, you would pay $2,000 to receive this constant perpetuity if your discount rate or your rate of return that you would like is 5%. The present value of a growing perpetuity is a little more complicated, but it is a quite straightforward formula. We have to adjust both the numerator at the top or the denominator at the bottom by the growth rate. We're going to look at the payment that you receive at the end of the first year. That is going to be denoted as payment one. If you know what the previous payment was that was just paid, you can calculate what the payment at the end of year one would be by growing it by, by one plus the interest rate. We're going to divide by the, um, the difference between your discount rate and the growth rate, K minus G. Notice that your growth rate cannot be larger than the discount rate, otherwise this formula does not work. So let's consider that $100 that grows by 2% each year in perpetuity, and you have a discount rate of 5%. Plugging the values into this, is it going to be worth more or less than the $2,000 we saw with the constant perpetuity. Well, if you think about it, you're go it's going to be the payments you're going to receive are going to be growing each period, so it should be more. The question is, how much? Well, it turns out that it's going to be worth $3,333. Well, let's just take a look. Let's compare 
This is the payment that you receive each period for that constant perpetuity. Another way of saying constant is that the growth rate is zero. So you could plug in, you could use that same formula. It would just be in the, the denominator, k minus g would be 5% minus 0% or 0 0.05. As you can see, $100 divided by 0 0.05 is $2,000. For that growing perpetuity, you can see that even though it looks small, the growth is exponential over time. Instead of remaining at $100, it goes up from 100 to 102 to 104. And you can see that if you go out to 500 periods, your, your annual payment is going to be close to $2 million. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the payments that you receive far in the future are going to have very little value in today's dollars. Why is that? Because of discounting, because of time value money. So let's take a look. So here we have that growing perpetuity. Here the red line is showing the value of the fixed payment. And as you saw, it goes up until you're receiving almost $2 million in year 500. When you calculate the present value in today's dollars, however, you can see that 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 payment in year 500 is worth almost nothing in today's dollars in present value terms. Whereas the $100 received at the end of one year discounted at um, the year discount rate of 5% is going to be roughly $95. Okay. How do we know? Well, we could take use our present value future value formula. So let's take the payment that you'd receive in the 10th year by the 10th year, the fixed payment is going to be, sorry, by the 10th year, the payment is going to be roughly $120. You're going to discount it at 5% for 10 years, and in today's dollars, that will be worth $73.37. In other words, if you invested $73.37 today, and you invested at 5%, compounded annually for 10 years, it would grow to be worth $119.51. Okay. Let's take the 50th payment. The 50th payment is going to be now $263.88. It's been growing by 2% each year. If you discount that $263 over 50 periods, it is only worth $23 today. As you can see, if you invest $23 today at 5%, compound it annually and hold it for 50 years, it would grow to be worth $263. Notice, however, that the present value of this growing perpetuity is the sum of each of these payments every year in perpetuity, and that the, the 50th payment has adding far less than the payment in the 10th year. This is typical because of the time value money and the power of compounding. That's it. Thanks very much.